Bookcase and Coffee presents Buzzing About Romance, a quick shot of romance. Hey everyone, welcome to a quick shot of romance. I am Becky, and joining me for this quick shot of romance is podcast contributor Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Becky. Um, so this for this episode of A Quick Shot of Romance, we are reviewing Relentless Devil by Kylie Kent. This is book one in the Sons of Valentino series. This is a next-gen series. Kylie Kent was a new-to-me author. I have been in the midst of this mafia romance rabbit hole, and I keep Googling different... Uh, Sounds like more of a black hole. It is a bit a of a... rabbit hole. <laughs> it is a bit of a dark, dark hole. Um, and I've read some good ones. I've read some that are bonkers. <laughs> this was a good one. Um so is Kylie Kent a new to you author? Yes. I she was not even on my radar until you were like, hey, check this out. And I was like, oh. Yeah, well, we have to do all this prep because we have an upcoming trope talk that's mafia. So I, I'm just I'm helping you. It's like community service. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Although um, I'm, I'm a little mad. Because now you have to go back and read the others or because you have to wait for the rest of the series? Because I have to wait for the rest of the series. Like, I was ready to go to book two. Um, I don't know if I should say you're welcome or I'm sorry. <laughs> what I love about this, and we're going to talk about it too a little bit in the episode, but what I really loved about this book is this is a second gen, which is a current trend that we're seeing happening a ton in romance, particularly with KU authors. They're all writing next gen. Um, and sometimes they're misses. Yes. And sometimes you really need to have read the previous generation's series to understand the nuances. And I feel like this book stands alone amazingly well. I, uh, yeah, that was going to be my comment. Like, I did not read the previous books. I was not lost at all. Like, nothing stood out to me as needing to read those books. Do I want to go back and read some of those books? Absolutely. Yes. There's an aunt in this book that everyone's like, mm, she's a little off balance. And I'm like, <laughs> I'd like to know her story. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, this, I, I was really impressed with this book. And how the author does this. Um, and again, I picked this book up without reading a blurb. <laughs> I was just on Amazon and I was like, mafia romances. <laughs> so do us a favor, though, and read us the blurb so that other people do not not do what I did. <laughs> Maddie, work, sleep, and some, sometimes eat. Rinse and repeat. That's been my life for the past two years, one struggle after another, fighting to keep my sister alive, fighting to ma maintain the strength to not give up. I had everything under control. I had a routine order until a certain Mr. Tall, Dark, and Handsome turned my world on its axis. He's relentless. No matter how much I shut him down, he keeps showing up. Theo, I made it a habit to always get what I want, either through brute force or outsmarting my opponent. I never lose. I never hear the words no until the day I walk into a coffee shop and saw her. Maddie doesn't know who she's dealing with. She doesn't know how, just how relentless I am when I want something. And right now that something is the mousy brunette glaring at me from behind the counter. So the release date on this is December 6th of 2022. Tropes are mafia. This is an instant love, instant connection romance. They are age gap big city, billionaire. It is dark, but not super dark. Oh, yeah, not overly dark. No. Um, I would say if you've read Bella Matthews' Rise of the King, or if you've read Aurora Rose Reynolds, they're in line with those. They're even like Michelle Hurd. It's kind of, it's dark because there is some violence on page, but it's not like bonkers dark. Yes. Um, so he is a dirty talker. Oh, such a dirty talker. Um, it does have some found family vibes, hidden identity, meet cute, which can we just talk real quick about this meet cute? <laughs> yes, we can. 
So she is running late to her day job as a coffee barista. And this takes place in New York City. And she has to ride the subway. And things have happened. And she is running to the coffee shop. And she goes through the door and plows into this man who is wearing a very, very high-end, very expensive tailored suit. And he is now covered in coffee. And she's like trying to pat him yeah, right? like the, ooh, ooh, ooh. down and he keeps trying to be like, it's OK. And she's just still like trying and I'll make you a new cup of coffee. Which is, I think is the funniest part because apparently she cannot make a cup of coffee. No, he was like, he like immediately takes a sip, leaves the coffee shop and pitches it in the trash can. Yes. So funny. Um, so, th- like we said, this is a next gen. These are opposites. Like, they are very different people. He is a very much possessive alpha hero. And Maddie is raising her sibling in this book. Series name is Sons of Valentino. This is an interconnected standalone. Uh, put out percentage was 56%. And Maddie makes him work hard, hard yes. for that HEA. Yeah. Like she's not, yeah, she's not giving in. No. So let's let's talk about these char- these main characters because Theo and Maddie are dynamic in very different ways. I do want to say content trigger warnings on this. Um, it does deal with terminal chronic illness. Um, Maddie's sister is suffering, um, I can't think of the sister's name. Lila. Lila is suffering from kidney failure and is on dialysis. Mm -hmm. I will say as the mom of someone of a chronically, you know, medical child, I felt like for the most part, the author did a good job. There's some things that when we get into the mafia side of things. Right. Like the doctor brought a dialysis machine, dialysis machine, and set up to his apartment. Yeah. Okay. Well, he's the mafia, and you know he's got all the money. So I, sure, 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 right. right. But they yep. didn't Just like got one of those lying around. <laughs> right, and but there was no black market transplant, or he didn't murder someone <laughs> to get a kidney. I really was waiting for that. Yeah, well, I mean, he he was willing to. Right. <laughs> I was like, he's going to murder someone to get a kidney, and that's going to be right. icky, and I'm going to DNF it. But he doesn't. Yeah. So it's really yeah. well done. Um, but, you know, because while I like to say I don't have any content or trigger issues, we do know that I have a thing about birds. But also, um, sometimes medical in romance bothers me because i know things and and you have a similar issue yes i i mean i also have a child with chronic illness and my husband works in the medical field so yes yeah so but this was really well done like it wasn't a huge part of the story but what was in it made sense and it was well done so there is that piece uh but let's talk about maddie and theodo because like i said they're opposites very much so like she is always like she's working to get everything done on her own she doesn't have a group of people to um... no it's maddie her parents died in a car accident um maddie left college and moved home to take care of her sister who has kidney disease and then it's maddie's best friend gia who really helped juggle maddie's working two jobs trying to make the rent and keep things okay for right. um her sister and she's a hustler though like she yeah she's going from like one job to the next um yeah just juggling it all yeah i really thought she was really dynamic she was smart, but also street smart. Sometimes we get a really right. smart heroine and then you're like, oh, she's a little too stupid to live. Yeah. That yes. was not the case with Maddie. She was both intellectually smart. She realized what she was facing and what she had to do to get through to those moments. 
but she also had some street smarts because right. she realizes that one of the guys is like following her. Yes. <laughs> well, no, it's yeah, him. Like, Theo's following yes. her and stalking her. Yes. And she, yeah. Because she had like hairspray, I think, or something. <laughs> yes. She's like, I'm going to spray it because it's all she hey, had. Right. I mean, we've all been in situations right. where we're well, like, where you clutch your use? key. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, it's going to work. It's going to save you. <laughs> it is. Um, so I just, I really liked her character. I was really, she draws you into the story because there's this chaotic whirlwind of her personality. Right. And she, I mean, she's determined. She, sometimes you get characters that are in similar situations and like they're just like going through the daily grind but like she kind of sees a light at the end of the tunnel like she doesn't know what that light is but she knows there's one there yeah and then um so let's talk about Theo a little bit because I actually ended up loving him and he is quickly became a book boyfriend to be honest but I wasn't so sure at first because when I say determined, that is not a strong enough word. Relentless. Right. Relentless. Is, uh, yes. Yeah. Because he's, I mean, he's all in, yeah. like. From get. From the, like, yeah, like from the bad coffee on, like, he's like, okay. Well, he stalks her, figures out where she works her second job after the coffee shop, shows up at the bar. Right. And she has no clue. Maddie does not know who he is. But the people around her are like, hey. you know who that is, right? And she's like, no. Nah. It's just the guy I ran into at the coffee shop. And he is like head to take over the big, huge mafia family of New York City. And I mean, he's a prince, a mafia prince. And also what I loved is the family dynamic was not typical in mafia no not at all like the parents were not strict and harsh in uh um ritual or prominence and they weren't like like his mom when maddie has to go goes to a family dinner she's been summoned to family dinner <laughs> his mom is like just you know, like the suburban housewife, like, oh, hi, it's so great to see you. I'm so glad you're here. And she's just like, what? But, right. Oh, okay. <laughs> and yeah, his, they're like very nor normal-ish family that has like, oh, this is just our job. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, And the brothers, Theo has three brothers. There's the brother that's just younger than him. And then there's a set of twins. And I think there's one part, they're at dinner, at the Sunday dinner at his mom's is a very big deal. And the twins get into an argument and are, like, legit fighting. Right. On Breaking the... stuff. <laughs> and everyone's just continue to eat. And they're like, knock yep. it off. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. She's like, if you break a vase, you're going to have to pay for it. I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> It was so funny. And the brothers are, they provide some humor to the story yes. and a little, just, they're hilarious. They really are, especially the twins. I have a favorite. I will not tell you which one, um, but I think his book is last. Of course. Damn it. Um, so what, so this book for me was a very fast read. Like this yeah. book read really quick. I started it at 9.30 at night and at 1.30 I was texting Leah, put this on your TBR. <laughs> the next morning she's like, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, we're not doing that today, but just read this book. And then she read it and she's like, oh, yes. But yes. there were, was there anything within this book that frustrated you that you were just kind of like, did I need that? Um, there were like, like, this is being like nitpicky. Like there were a few inconsistencies, like about Lila's age and something else. like, it was just little things. Um, they weren't enough for me to like, to ruin the book. Um, no, at all. no, I think that for me, I got a little frustrated with the, and it was very romance cliche. Some of the things that happen in the end, 
like the realizations, the big reveals. And I do think, while I liked Maddie and think she was a good character, her character arc was actually a little weak. She was the exact same person in the beginning of the book that she was in the end of the book. I would have liked to have seen her a little more growth and like to have seen her maybe rely on Theo or, you know, into the family because she makes some choices early on in the book that pull Theo back from a family thing that has taken him out of the country. And I just wish there had been a little more growth. Like, even if she looked... I think that's kind of like what was pulling me to like, I need book two now is like, I can see like these storylines bleeding into the brothers and kind of like the hope to see them grow, all of them grow. Yeah. I do think that this is one of those authors that when she writes a group of books, one couple's story is going to bleed into the next story. Because I don't think, see how you can do the next brothers, which is set up in this book so incredibly well. <laughs> right? Because you're like, I mean, she puts it in there and you're like, oh, well, can I have his book like right now and I'll come back to this one? <laughs> well, and I don't feel it's spoilers, so I'm going to share it because the blurb for book two is out because book two comes out in February, I think. Yes. Um, The brother gets accidentally married to his very best friend. Yes. But we have no idea why. We just, he says to his brother, I think I got married <laughs> to Savannah. And I'm like, y- you think you got married? Like, dude. Um, One of the things that I thought was really dynamic in this book was the banter and the chemistry. I love Insta Love. I am all about that instant connection romance because I don't want to wait forever. Although right. we did wait 56%. For this book. Um, Manny holds out. Yeah, she does. But I liked it. And it created chemistry right. and tension. And I do think that this was a very readable. And especially because of the type of character Theo is. Like the instant connection and then the pursuit made sense. I agree. Yeah. And the I agree with the banter. Like she, she has a mouth on her and she's not afraid to use it. Um, and yeah, that made a great read. And I don't often say this because lately I feel like all I complain about is overwritten. You could have removed a hundred pages from this book. It didn't need to be 400 pages. 300 would have been fine because I liked these characters. I liked the chemistry. I liked the banter. I could have done with another 50 pages in this book. I agree. Um, yeah, like I could have seen more of like their relationship pro- like progressing through, um, especially after like the big like point where like, hey, they got to like take well, stuff and yeah. Yeah. And the big reveal piece, and I'm not going to spoil that for you, the listener, it, it works, but I would have liked a little bit more because it pulls in his grandmother and it pulls in this other random mob boss guy. And I would have liked to have seen more the family kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Like everybody's going to have a say in what's going on here. Right. So I will say, uh, you know, title wise, if you're looking for other mafia romances that would be similar, I would suggest Aurora Rose Reynolds, her Underground King series. I would say um, uh, Michelle Hurd and her Sinner series is a little bit on this lighter side. They're not overly dark, dark mafia. So anyway, anything else we missed on this one? I think we covered most of it. Just read this book read this book it's nku it's phenomenal um jenny thank you so much for joining me for this quick shot of romance thanks for having me until next time everyone happy reading find us on instagram at buzzing about romance or on twitter at buzzing romance if you like the podcast please leave a review if you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes.